Hey everyone, uh, I'm Mark Brown. I'm a PM on the Cosmos DB team. You can ask me about all this stuff and also you can ask me about bourbon uh, and Pacific Northwest beer. Okay, uh, Gall already announced and talked about the vector search here. I'm gonna show you this thing in action. So I've been working on building a little sample application uh, and here's kind of the rough outline of this thing here. So we've got Azure Cosmos DB NoSQL uh, containers sitting over here on the left hand side and we're gonna ingest, or I already ingested, a bunch of data into this thing. The data set I'm working with here is the AdventureWorks 2017 database. You don't have to take a picture because I'm gonna give you a link to this thing. I'll, I'll, you can get all the code and play with it all by yourself. So, AdventureWorks 2017 database, I'm just using a subset of this data. I've got their product table, uh, which has got about 230 products in there. Uh, I've got a customer table, and I've just taken and trimmed that down, so I got about 100 customers in there. Uh, and then about 1,200 orders. Uh, in their sales orders, okay? And I'll show you this. This is data that we've remodeled from uh, SQL Server into Cosmos DB. This is gonna be sitting in two different containers. I got a product container and then a customer container that has customers and sales orders. Okay, so the way this thing works is we ingest data into Cosmos DB. I've got an Azure function that's hosting a change feed uh, trigger on there. Uh, when the data gets ingested into Cosmos DB, Change Feed's gonna pick that up, and then it's gonna call Azure OpenAI and request an embedding for that data. It's gonna take that back, and then it's gonna insert it into our Azure Cosmos DB Mongo V core uh, that Gall was talking about here earlier. On the other side, I've got an Azure uh, web app running Blazor server, uh, and that's got a nice little chat user experience to it. Uh, and what we can do is customers or anybody can go and just ask a question in there and ask it questions about the data that's in the database here. Uh, what it will do is it will take that question and then go generate embeddings or vectors for your question and then use that to go run a vector search against MongoDB vCore here. Once it's got the answers from that, it's gonna take that and then call the completions API for uh, Azure OpenAI uh, and then return that as a response back to the user. Okay, clear as mud. Uh, here, you can take a picture of this because everything I'm gonna show you is available right here. And this is all up on GitHub in our Azure Cosmos DB GitHub org. Uh, this flavor, of course, is gonna show you Mongo vCore. I also have another version of this that's running on Redis Enterprise. So if you wanna run Redis Enterprise, it's gonna cost you about 700 bucks a month, but if you wanna run Redis Enterprise and do that, you can use that as well uh, and get the same capability. All right, we are done with slides. Let's get to some demo, huh? Okay, let me go, and I wanna show you, uh, here is the GitHub repo that I just showed you here, uh, and you scroll down a little bit, here's the link for the Mongo V core that's running on a separate branch, and then here's the Redis one. Here's the architecture, uh, I showed you in here uh, as well. Uh, let's go into the vCore one here. Uh, and I wanna scroll down, this will talk a little bit about the data we're talking about here, which is our Cosmic Works data store. Uh, this is the user experience that you can see in here. This is a Blazor server app uh, running in here and hosted on Azure Web Apps. Uh, more stuff on the solution flow here, generating vectors, searching vectors, getting started, you will, require, you will be required to get uh, your subscription whitelisted for Azure OpenAI. This solution will not run uh, without it. So go and you, when you go to this thing, the first thing you should do is go and sign up and get your subscriptions whitelisted. Uh, and then when that's all there, then you're ready to go. All you need to do is just click this deploy to Azure button and I'm not gonna deploy this because it's the most boring thing in the world. Uh, but I've got a bicep or an ARM template here. This thing will one-click deploy everything into a new resource group for you, uh, and you don't have to touch anything. So you just put in your name for you want, so you can make it just whatever, something unique, because it needs to be globally unique for Azure Web Apps, the function, uh, Cosmos DB, and Azure OpenAI. Uh, put in your MongoDB username and password here. This is just the GitHub repo and the branch it's gonna run on. Uh, once that's done, uh, it's gonna deploy everything in here. It will inject the keys into the Azure Web App. It will inject your keys into the functions instance. Uh, and that's it. All you need to do is just basically go uh, find your web app uh, in here. 
uh, oh, that's the Cosmos database, sorry. Go find your web app in here. Uh, and then you can just go and click this, and then boom, it will come right up. Okay, that's architecture, that's deployment. Uh, let's get down to actually showing you how this is gonna work. All right, first thing, I've got this thing running, it's locally here on my machine. I've got the web app running. Uh, I also have my Azure function running here. I've got two things going on. I've got a trigger for my customers and orders, and I'll show you the code for that. I've got a custom, I've got a trigger on my products uh, as well. And then I have an HTTP trigger. Uh, I'm gonna use that to show you how you can inject a piece of data later and then generate vectors on that. It's just all part of the demo here, okay? All right, so let's go. Here is our user interface here. <clears throat> Cosmic Works AI Retail Assistant chat. Uh, and so let's go and create a new chat here. Now, this is AdventureWorks database, right? So if you all remember, uh, AdventureWorks is a retail little bike outfit. So they sell like mountain bikes and they sell accessories and they sell clothing, stuff like that. So uh, let's ask it a question. Uh, uh, list all your bikes. So that's going to take generate vectors. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, the data only includes a few bike products. So this is uh, something interesting. Uh, these types of systems, like what most people work on when they develop applications, are not deterministic, right? When you write an application, the same inputs you send into that application should return the same outputs. But that's not how these things work. These are not deterministic systems. They're probabilistic systems, which means you might get the expected response, but it might answer in some completely bizarre way like it did right here, right? Which is, I don't know what you're talking about. So let's ask this question again. All right, that thing is just acting weird. Let's try a new chat here. There we go. Uh, yeah, I don't know why, but probabilistic, not deterministic, right? I just asked it the same question, <clears throat> and here it is. These are all the bikes. So this is a vector search coming right back and then passed to the user in this little chat interface, right? This could be running as like a little pop-up maybe on a retail page. I'm just using it as kind of a just a regular chat uh, interface here. Uh, you'll also notice here uh, that after I asked the question, it also summarized the conversation for me. So this is another thing that's very nice about uh, these kind of large language models like uh, Azure OpenAI or their chat GPT uh, is you can ask it to summarize stuff. And I have a function in here that after the first question, it says, please summarize this with a couple of words so I can put it on a button on a web page. And that's what it did. Sometimes that's what it did. Okay, so that's our data in here. Let me just show you. Here's the data sitting in our Mongo V core, right? So here's basically our product table in here. Uh, I've got everything in here though. I've got my customers and I got my sales orders and it's all sitting in a single collection called vectors. Uh, and here you can see, here's an array and that's a whole bunch of vectors. So I got about 1500 something uh, numbers in there, right? So that's my data within my Mongo V core. All right, let's do, uh, let's do this. I wanna show you the code in here and how it works. And all, what I'll do is I'll step through it so you can see exactly what's happening. All right, so how am I doing on time? Six minutes, all right, that's good. Um, create a new chat here. And you list for me your socks. Okay, I'm getting my call in here. So what I've got is I've got a user prompt here. It says, can you list me your socks? This is the session ID. I'm just recording a unique session ID uh, for these things here. So. Let's go ahead and step into this. I'm now into my Azure OpenAI uh, service that I've got in here. So here's my web app. I have a chat service, a Cosmos DB service, a MongoDB service, and an OpenAI service. So these are just my custom services in here. So first thing I need to do, I need to get an embedding or generate uh, vectors for the text I just sent in. So I'm gonna call this here. Here's my embedding options. I'm gonna pass in the input and there's my session ID. And then I'm gonna call the Azure OpenAI and I'm gonna get some stuff. I can see how many tokens I used. 
Uh, I'm gonna take and put those embeddings into an array. Uh, and then I'm gonna return that uh, back to the user. How do I get back out of this thing? All right, let's just keep going. All right, uh, so there, I've got my vectors. Now, I need to go do a search. So I've got a bunch of vectors here, and I'm gonna call my Mongo service, vector search async, and I'm gonna go in here. Uh, I'm gonna get a list of docs in here. Now, I'm gonna go and do my search. This is it right here. And I'm gonna put all those back into a single string and then join that into some JSON here. Oh boy, is that gonna just keep on going? Uh, I, what's wrong with this thing? Uh, let's go back to here. Let's let that run. Okay, uh, next, I wanna get my conversation. So uh, people may think that large language models like OpenAI can actually memorize or know the context of what's going on. They actually have no clue from request to request what you, what you just asked it. Uh, so the way you do that is you save the, the conversation uh, and then you go and pass it. So here, I've got a method where I'm gonna go get that conversation. I'm just gonna skip over that because I'm running out of time. Uh, next. Finally, I'm gonna go get my completion. So I've got my response uh, in my data. Uh, so here's the conversation. Here's all the documents, the session ID. Let's call OpenAI again. This is their completions API. So I'm gonna call a system prompt here. That system prompt, all the way at the top here, basically says you're an intelligent assistant. You work for Cosmos DB Bikes Company. Here's your instructions. Only ask her the stuff that's related to this below. Uh, don't reference any customer data that's not there. Uh, if you're unsure, just say, I don't know. These are important to kind of tell the AI assistant how to behave. Uh, also, if you're doing this in like a real scenario for your customers, you don't want people asking it like random questions, like, can you help me with my trading strategies for inflation or whatever? Uh, you want it to stay on point uh, for what it's doing. So let's go ahead and run this. And we're gonna go and call that, get the chat completions API and then run that, and we'll just go and run this all the way through. And here we go. You got four types of socks, racing, large and medium, my, mountain bike socks, and, and, and uh, medium and large. Okay, uh, boy, I got two minutes left. Let's try, we're gonna do something new here. Uh, I'm gonna call my HTTP function, uh, and that's gonna add a product in here. Yeah, and here's my trigger right here on product. So I'm gonna go generate embeddings on the product. That's the same thing I did earlier with my question, right? So now I've got a bunch of vectors in here. Uh, convert that into a Mongo document. And then I'm gonna insert it in here. So this is basically gonna do an upsert in here. So if I update it, it's gonna update within there. We'll let that go and complete. Now start a new chat. Can you please, oh, the sock was a cosmic sock. Please list all of your socks. And oh, let's get rid of these breakpoints. And let it run. We got a minute and a half left. This is hopefully gonna work. There we go. And so there is my new sock there with the additional or the existing four socks within there. So point being here is this is an operational database, data changes, I got new orders, new customers, new products. Great, just use like a change feed in here when you write new data into your database, you generate the vectors, gets loaded into the database, ready for searching. Uh, I think that's it for me. So any questions? I got 55 seconds left. If you ask a question, I will give you a coaster. Come on, you know you want one, yes. Could do a hybrid what? Dense, Dense and sparse. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say yes. That's what I'm gonna say. Any other questions? How do I format it? I mean, I'm just passing it into a, basically it's a Blazor server page, right? These are little components in there. I've got a chat pane, my left nav, and then these things just get rendered. 
it's a string, and then I'm basically, right, so the, the completion model will put in things like new lines and other stuff, like it'll write a book, but well, you can see, right, like it put these dashes in here, it formatted it all nice for me. So I'm just rendering that out, just like normal HTML. Yeah, sure, you, I'll give you a coaster too. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.